what's up guys and welcome back to my channel today this video is going to be a pattern tutorial for a puff sleeve one shoulder dress so i've received a few requests on my instagram asking how to show how to make a puff sleeve and also sort of a one shoulder dress design i developed this dress design from my basic sleeve and my basic bodice which i've already linked down below and i'll probably link somewhere on the screen throughout the video so if you haven't seen those already you should probably go check those out before you come back to watch this tutorial so this dress i went on to test on the pattern towards the end of the video just to check for fit and if there was anything else i wanted to modify but so far so good i hope you guys would enjoy watching this video make sure to give it a thumbs up if you do enjoy it subscribe if you haven't already be the very first to know whenever i have new videos on the channel every single week so let's just get straight into this video and i hope this is a design that you guys will recreate for yourself either this holiday season or sometime in the new year I'm going to be working the f with the following tools and materials and first up is my long metal ruler. I'm also going to be needing my pattern master and my set square. I also have my tape measure to take down my measurements. I have my fabric scissors, my paper scissors, my small scissors for notches, my marker pen and some cellar tape. I'll also be needing some pins when it's time for me to test my pattern as well as some calico fabric. I'm going to be experimenting with the basic sleeve, the front and the back of my basic bodice to develop this dress design on some pattern paper as you can see here. So first up, you need to decide on how long you want your sleeve to be, the length of your dress as well as the fit around the hem. Do you want it to be more penciled or just straight cut? So I'm going to be working on the puff sleeve pattern first. And the first thing I did was I duplicated my sleeve pattern because I want to have my original copy for future use. In my duplicate pattern, I dropped the sleeve head by 4 centimeters or 2 inches because I don't want that much ease around the sleeve head. I also added 2 centimeters or 1 inch hem allowance and I ensured to do that while folding method. So when it's time to actually fold up the hem of that sleeve, we have the edges working properly. So the first thing I'm doing here is I'm just indicating where my elbow line is and I'm going to mark 8 centimeters or 3 inches above that elbow line and then just square that point across from one end to the other. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be cutting from the top of the sleeve, that mid sleeve point from the top to that 8 centimeter point we just marked and we're going to be cutting into the sides as well. So let me show you that real quickly. I'm just going to grab my paper scissors and we're going to be cutting from the sleeve head and into the sides like so. So starting at the beginning here so you can get to the middle point, I'm just cutting down this way and then I'm going into the sides like so and try to cut as close as possible to the edge because that will just make spreading this particular sleeve pattern to get the puff detail at the head a whole lot easier. So once that is done, I'm going to cut out fresh pattern paper about a meter wide. You wouldn't need that much, but just about half a meter to a meter wide. So I'm just placing it like so, and I'm taping down the hem of the sleeve so it doesn't move. So we're going to be spreading this side of the sleeve panel by four inches or 10 centimeters. And the more you spread these panels, the more dramatic the puff is going to be. So I've decided to work with four inches or 10 cm and I'm just taping down that particular panel like so all the way around because we don't want it to move. And I'm going to be repeating the same thing on this other side. You want to spread it by the same amount so the detail is even across the front and the back of the sleeve so i'm just grabbing some cellar tape now and i'm taping down this particular panel along the inside along the outside and along the sleeve curve Next up, I'm going to be drawing in a connecting curve at the sides because of the spreading. That side of the sleeve is more like an angle rather than a straight 
or like a nice rounded curve so i'm just joining those two ends like so so we have that new line to work with for the side so i'm just drawing in a line that cuts through the middle of the sleeve and is going to act as my grain line and what you would want to do next is to connect both panels like so so i'm just using my pencil to roughly sketch out the connecting point and you want it to be rounded it doesn't it's not it's not supposed to be straight it's meant to be rounded and the more you exaggerate this connecting curve the more dramatic that puff on top of the sleeve head is going to be so the bigger you make this particular rounded connecting line Line, the more dramatic the puff will be on the top of your sleeve so I'm just going in here and I'm connecting with my pattern master refining my lines and finishing off this particular part of the sleeve I'm just getting rid of any extra line so I'm not confused when it's time for me to actually cut out the panel so I'm indicating what side is the front and what side is the back and thankfully because my notches were still there from my original sleeve pattern I transferred that onto this pattern as well so I'm just cutting out this line like so and this is going to be part of the sleeve. So the way this is going to work is you only need to cut one since it's a mono strap dress or a one shoulder dress but if you're if you're doing both shoulders you need to cut two of the sleeve and then when it's actually time to sew this I will show it towards the end of the video. But we're going to be working on the front dress plan and what i basically did here was i traced off the front of the front bodies on a folded pattern paper and just mirrored the same details on the other side so you have one full piece for the front of the dress i transferred my darts as well because by getting rid of the darts we don't need to think about that particular dart instead that becomes a seam the dress length in itself is 34 inches and we're going to be planning our front neckline curve or monostrap or one shoulder neckline along this way. You can decide to make yours deeper, you can decide to make yours a bit more dramatic but I'm just going in here to reduce my shoulder length to 7 centimeters or 3 inches because I want that part of the shoulder to be more narrow around the sleeve of the dress. So I'm just going in here to draw in my new front sleeve curve adding my notch and then I'm just taking one centimeters or about half an inch from the front neckline and I'm connecting it to our one shoulder neckline that we'll be working with. So you just go ahead and refine this line. I did it with pencil first of all because I, when there is a mistake it's easier to correct when it's pencil. Before I'm going in here to draw in with a marker pen. I think at this point my marker already started to die so I ended up just going back to my 2B pencil which you can still sort of see but it's not as clear as the marker pen. So I apologize for that in advance because later on I started working with my pencil. Next up, I'm going to go ahead and mark 2 centimeters or approximately 1 inch on either side of this particular line here. And I'm going to connect it back to the end of the dart on this side. And what this is going to do is it's going to prevent the dress from opening or being loose on that particular side in the front. So once that is done, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fold over the pattern like so and fold along that line where we just marked 2cm on either side and I'm going to be drawing upwards and marking the next panel's edge on this particular end pattern panel like so. So when you connect it from that point all the way to the bottom of the armhole, when you trace out this pattern and you it's time to join this edge pattern to the middle pattern on this particular seam, they match along that top edge. This will make complete sense when I sew this pattern later on in the, towards the end of this video. So you're going to end up with three panels for the front, panel one, which is closer to the bottom of the screen, the green panel in the middle and the blue panel towards the top. So you need to go ahead and trace out all of these panels separately Add your seam allowance all the way around and add your hem allowance. I decided to add about three centimeters or one and a half inch hem allowance to the bottom of the panels. And that gives me enough hem allowance to work with when it's time to finish off the bottom of the dress. So I went ahead and I traced off my second panel, which is the panel in the middle. I added my center front point because if I need to cut lining, I need to be able to remember what particular point is the center front and I cut out my third panel as well. So if you're going to cut out linings using this panel, all you have to do is cut out the same 
panels for one two and three but at the hem instead of cutting three centimeters you just cut one centimeter hem allowance and because of the extension we did on this particular panel the two of them merge on this particular seam like so so now that we're done with the front i'm just going to take and put them aside so i can go ahead and work on the back dress plan so i essentially repeated the same thing i did for the front i traced out around the back transferred my dots made the dress length 86 centimeters or 34 inches you should work with the dress length they are comfortable with and i went ahead to mirror that on the other side so we have one full back piece or plan that we can work with so as you can see i transferred my dots and i also added a two centimeter or one inch center back dot on both sides so it's two centimeter from the center back to that curve there and it's two centimeter from the center back curve to the other side and i just joined that two cm point to the top and to the bottom so we have that dot at the middle so here i'm just transferring my notches for my new arm curve after i shortened the shoulder to seven centimeters and then i'm just drawing in my back neckline like so what i did was i transferred the same curve from the front to the back so the shoulder width is the same and the side sort of shape is the same as well so here i'm just marking one centimeter on both sides of that particular line like so and i'm joining them to the end of that dot and what that would do is to help to hold that particular part of the back of the dress a bit tighter so i'm just folding it in like this like what i did with the front and i'm transferring the height of the panel right next to it to that edge panel and then you connect that point to the side seam so when you trace out that panel and you intend to join it to the one next to it they they meet at that particular beginning point so i'm just erasing any lines that i don't need and i'm going to go ahead and just cross out my dot lines or any other points that i don't want to transfer onto my panels so i'm going to go ahead and turn this to the back this is very important because if you don't do this what you would realize is you're going to have a back and front panels that do not correspond together so you turn this to the back and you trace off your panels on the back of this plan that you just did because the dress is asymmetric along the neckline you cannot just sort of get away with folding and cutting things like we normally do so i've went ahead and i've traced out my panels my one two three and four you should end up with four panels two on each side the one side is where the shoulder is and the other side is where you don't uh, have like an arm i went ahead and i added my one centimeter seam allowance all the way around and then i added my three centimeters or one and a half inches to the hem so i have room to finish up the hem of the dress when it's actually time to work with it so these are all of my main dress patterns done my front and my backs and you just need to cut one of each for the main dress and one of each for the lining if you intend to attach a lining to this dress so so far so good but i want to go ahead and test this pattern to see if they actually work to check for any mistakes before I go ahead to cut in my real fabric. Now on to the pattern testing. I've cut out my patterns in calico and we're going to be pinning together the front panels like so. So once you pin up that seam, you, you know you are good to go ahead and stitch it up. So we have one full panel for the front when you sew this particular seams up. I'm going to go ahead and pin together my backs. I'm pinning my two sides like so, pinning up my center backs. I'm pinning up the other side. So we have three seams on the back. Because I want to fix the zip on the side seam, I'm actually not keeping in mind to leave any seam open along the center back so i'm just sewing on a one centimeter seam allowance using a normal straight stitch this does not have to be perfect because the aim is just to test to see if there are any errors in the pattern that we can correct before we go ahead to work with our main fabric so i've sewn up my fronts and my backs and i've pinned together the, the front and the back along the shoulder and along the sides i pinned up all the way from the top to the bottom of the side where the sleeve is going to sit 
and on the other side where there is no arm i just pinned to about the hip point and the plan is to fix the zip on the part that is open on top like so so i'm just going to go ahead and sew up the shoulder and the side seams on my domestic machine sewing on a one centimeter seam allowance using a normal straight stitch remembering to do my back stitch at the beginning and at the end to secure all of my seams in place and like i said just do this ever so nicely and ever so quickly so you can go ahead to work on the sleeve for this dress design so i'm just going in here to finish up this particular seam like so and i'm going to grab my sleeve so i cut out my sleeve in calico like we did with the main dress and you need to sew with the loosest stitch around the sleeve head so we can gather up all of that excess that we added through slashing and spreading back into the original sort of width that the sleeve head is supposed to be so by the time you do that what you end up having is you, you end up having a nice puff i think that's where the name of the sleeve came from a nice puff around the head of the sleeve alone and then for the bottom of the sleeve around the hem it's just nice and straight and no extra sort of measurement is added there so once that is all gathered in place i'm just going to pin together the side seam and we're going to sew up the side seam from the hem all the way to the top like so on a one centimeter seam allowance using a normal straight stitch remembering to do our back stitch at the beginning and at the end to secure the seam in place so once that is done we're going to grab the sleeve and we're going to turn it inside out and fit it into the armhole of the dress like so so now i'm just pinning up the side i'm going to go ahead and pin up the sleeve head to the shoulder point pin up the sides and then sew the sleeve into the armhole of the dress so once you sew this particular sleeve in place you have your puff detail incorporated all right so i have put on the the twirl or the sample just to check for the fit and this is what it looks like i just pinned up the hem like so i folded in the hem by about one and a half inches to just make it look nice at the bottom but i think it's a bit too short for me i really really like the the sleeves i really really like the sleeves i like how very dramatic it is like over here and then it just like sim just i don't know straightens out at the bottom and it's comfortable it's not too tight i can raise up my arm i can put it down looks really really nice i thought this was going to be too shallow but I actually like the fact that it's not too deep, so there is not a lot of shoulder and boob showing. It's just the right amount. What I love the most is how smooth the back is. Like there are no weird, weird bulges. The back is just nice and smooth, and it just go, glides smoothly down here, up on around my bum, and it just looks and feels good on. I'm actually very very happy with how it looks right now i think i would most likely work with a fabric that is stiff so i should be okay in terms of fit i think the only thing i would just maybe do is make it just like one inch longer there i just think it's too short it's just way too short for me but this looks really really nice what do you guys think so that wraps up the tutorial i hope you guys enjoyed watching if you did please give this video a thumbs up comment all of your thoughts and suggestions down below if you'd like to see a more detailed sewing tutorial make sure to give this video a thumbs up and let me know in the comment section and i'll see you guys in my next one bye